How are you? I hope you're doing well. Okay, so thanks for tuning back in to the series that I'm doing on saltines. Isn't that a funny, a funny thing? But I had said last week we talked about ruminating. Well, actually, two weeks ago, we talked about ruminating. And what was that? The meditation and the study and just the constant just amalgamation, if you will, of, of a particular subject. And I, I was determined to make ruminating a positive thing. The positive word we use for that is meditate. Okay, so to meditate or to study the word or the scriptures, I guess I have been meditating the study of communion. So I have been, uh, today is seven weeks, been doing uh, communion daily. And it has afforded me, it's a way to connect each and every day in a very personal way with, with the Father and with the Son and with the Holy Spirit. Just a way to set aside my day and think about it. And so as I'm kind of my heart is before the Lord and I'm thinking, you know, I started this out very specifically for a reason, but I have peace. And so I have moved forward and, or have felt, okay, today I really need to pray for this or, or whatever it may be. So I was looking down at my cracker and I've evidently been doing this a lot as I'm trying to connect and set aside all my other thoughts and what I'm taking every thought captive and I'm listening to the Lord and looking at my cracker. Now, the cracker, <coughs> excuse me, the cracker is, remember how I told you last week it didn't take much. So the faith of a mustard seed and it grows. The cracker also, if you'll look at it, the reason why we choose a cracker is because it has no yeast. And symbolically in the Old Testament, the Jews, when they were on their way, the Lord was delivering them out of Egypt in Exodus, delivering them out of Egypt. They took their dough with them before it had a chance to rise. It was a do what I ask you to do now. It is not going to have a chance to rise. So you had an unleavened cracker. That unleavened cracker represents, or bread in that particular case, represents no sin. It represents no sin. The yeast rep represented sin. Why? There's a little bit of yeast, and it permeates throughout the entire loaf and causes it to rise. Now, I have some more about that in the future, but this was, um, Casting Crown calls that, a, calls that a slow fade. You just, the, Satan just gets his toe in the door, and then a bit, what happens? That door... Boom, that door is wide open. So this represents the fact that there's no sin in the body of Christ, okay? Now, as you consider that, and of course we were born sinful, then one of the things I want you to meditate on is that he was willing to sacrifice himself without sin. And one of the things I wanna show you here is the layers and it's the first time the Lord ever showed me this. Okay, I'm going to try to get close enough. Do you see the layers of this cracker? Okay, I'll talk about this in a little while, another part of our series. But you see all this? And what I immediately saw was the layers of sin put upon the body of Christ. Layer after layer after layer after layer. Why? Every spiritual, emotional, and physical disease, wound, grief, sorrow, curse, everything was piled on him all at once. All at once. He carried it all. Okay? But in the midst of that, and he was pierced, right? What do you see through here? Light. Light. Light pierced the darkness that was on Christ. His body was pierced, was it not, to, to, to make sure that he was dead? But light pierced the darkness, and it went through. And guess what? 
Where this hole is, there is no sin. There are no curses. There is no disease. There's only light. Isn't that cool? God showed me that with a saltine. So Lord, we thank you so much for all of this that you bore in your body. All of this and that you were pierced. What does it say? That he was pierced for our transgressions. That's what Isaiah 53 says. And light came through. Blessings.